everybody. This is Angela, and welcome to another video diary of 350 and closing, a gastric bypass story. Uh, as you can see, we're coming to you via Ubu technology, and uh, I, I do appreciate Ubu because it's going to allow me to have the opportunity to introduce you to my baby sister. <laughs> I know that I have talked about some of the inspirations in my life, and uh, you know, as a as a as the eldest sister, uh, you know, the favorite sister. <laughs> I always uh, strive to be an inspiration to my younger sisters. But in this case, when it comes to weight loss, gastric bypass, and just an improvement of my overall health, I really have to say that my baby sister, Sonia Bennett, has been my inspiration. And so I wanted to take a little bit of time just to kind of talk with her about her health and about the surgery and um, and before we get into that, Sonia, I, I just I don't know if you realize how much I brag about you, about how healthy you look, and uh, how your entire disposition is just lighter and airier, and uh, it, it's just a joy to have you around. Now, I guess once we're carrying around all this weight, we can get a little bitter and hostile sometimes, but. You are just a joy to be around, and so I, I look forward to always talking to you and spending time with you, sweetie. Just wanted you to know that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, before I get started all up in your business and ask you a question, um, tell, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Well, my name is Sonia Bennett. I am 40 years old. Um, I reside in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, I have been heavy all my life. Um, I was a fat baby. I was a chunky little girl and a um, thick uh, teenager, and I became a fat, unhealthy adult. Um, I am the youngest of a set of fraternal twins, so mm -hmm. that was always the joke of, you know, that I took the food from my twin womb, um, mouth in the womb, and, um, you know, people would say things like, we look like the number 10 walking down the street, and, you know, kids can be very harsh. It was hard to grow up as right. a right. fat child, and uh, it was even harder as a um, very young adult. Mm. Mm. What more would you like to know? I'm a secretary, so um, very sedentary, unfortunately, uh, mm -hmm. but I do try to make myself get up and exercise, um, even in the snowy winter days of Michigan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I remember when you started talking about bypass and... Uh, you started talking about going to do some water aerobics. How how encouraging has that been to you to be able to go and get in the water and do those exercises? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, water aerobics um, is a great exercise. Uh, when I first started um, water aerobics, which was before I had the gastric bypass, I had a problem with my foot, and it was easier for me to do water aerobics. Um, it's easier on my joints, and also, um, I believe being in the water, you're able to do more things because you're lighter. You, right. you know, I, I don't know that I could um, do the Tybo kicking and the things that we do uh, in water aerobics. We do like a rivet thing, a frog jump up thing, and, uh, which is... <laughs> good for your thighs and things like that. I definitely could not do that just, you know, out here in the real world, but I I feel that water aerobics was very therapeutic. Um, I still go on Saturday mornings. Uh, I used to go after work, and I'm going to start doing that again, but um, it, I do not believe water aerobics is only for people who are um, elderly. I mean, they suggest water aerobics for pregnant women, for the elderly and for people who have problems with their joints or movement and flexibility, right. and let's face it, 
Um, I was 320-something pounds, and uh, I wasn't very flexible. Definitely had a lot of problems with my joints, and um, being diabetic, I had problems with my limbs as well. So um, I enjoy water aerobics. I would recommend it to anyone. My next endeavor is yoga. I'm going to my first class on Wednesday. Wow, you go, girl. (laughs) Look at that smile. (laughs) <laughs> tell, tell me, well, before I ask you why you decided gastric bypass, I know that you, it seemed like over the years, every time I talked to you, you were starting another diet. Tell me about some of those diets and if if you got anything out of them or what was that like for you? Well, growing up, my mother worked at Weight Watchers and um, she was overweight, a a size 16, not what most would call um, obese, uh, but she was overweight and struggled with her weight. And um, I had two sisters, you know, you and my twin, very small in stature. So um, being a chunky child, uh, she would often put me on her own um, special diet where uh, I drank the diet pop instead of um, regular pop and I would have um, a salad and more vegetables versus, um, you know, the pizza that my sisters and my father got. Um, I do. I I definitely tried a number of different um, weight loss programs, um, some that aren't around anymore, um, some that are and they were uh, therapeutic, they they worked. Uh, I learned a lot. I was on Weight Watchers as an adult. I learned from Weight Watchers in terms of measuring your food and how to season your food with salt and you know when when food tastes good you're more apt to want to eat it so um, whereas I may not have um, been uh, you know having food that was drowned in, in gravy and things like that as some of my peers or very greasy, convenient food, I did learn how to steam vegetables, how to use Mrs. Dash. Um, wow. One of the things I learned on a medical weight loss program, which was a program I was on, um, was that weighing your food could be as easy as just a hand size of hamburger versus pulling wow. out the scale, which I do have a scale, um, but pulling out the scale and actually measuring eight ounces of chicken. No one wants to do that. When yeah. you're hungry, you want to eat right You want to eat, eat. Right there. You wanna eat. yeah. Um, I was on a program called Trim for Life that's not around anymore. I was about to say, I don't know. <laughs> wow. I didn't like that program very much because um, they concentrated on uh, vegetables and fruit, but they would chastise if I ate. 12 grapes instead of 8 or if I didn't have a banana or if I had a whole banana instead of a full banana and I think that some programs when they're too restrictive you just don't stay with them when I started um, you know receiving the compliments and hearing oh wow you're really losing weight then my reward was to eat and uh, you know I would gain it back I'd fall off the program Um, the last program I was on was LA Weight Loss I was highly successful with um, L.A. Weight Loss. They were very motivating. Um, What made me stop going there basically was just that um, I hit a plateau where I was retaining water. I didn't know why. I later found out it was because I was diabetic. Um, And they gave me little tricks like uh, drinking hot lemon water with um, Splenda in it. And that definitely uh, was great if I was sitting at home by the toilet, you know, and I could go to the bathroom every 20 minutes. But, you know, in the real world, we just don't do that. Right, so, right, um, right. But L.A. Weight Loss was the last medically supervised program that I was on. And uh, I don't down any program. The programs are definitely better now. I've checked out Weight Watchers now because I have a friend who's on it. My grandmother's on um, Nutrisystem yes. and, uh, you know, yes. programs like Nutrisystem are good if you want them to fix your food. Right. But I think that um, 
we are talking about making a lifestyle change, right. you have to learn how to pick your own foods and what works well with for right. you. Right. Another music right. ministry that needs artist management, booking, promotions, and marketing, and retail distribution? Have you prayed for an affordable way to elevate your ministry with the tools to make it happen? If so, I'm looking for you. My name is Primus Terry Green Jr. and I am the CEO of Face 7 Music Ministry. I'm headed out this summer to visit cities to find ministries such as yours to sign singers, songwriters, producers, groups, musicians, and dancers. I want to work with you to elevate your ministry. Visit thechosentour.com for more information on our tour stops and locations. Let's get started. I know that you want to be chosen, chosen to be another PG Entertainment Group Phase 7 Urban Music Artist. For more information, dial 404-969-2765. Hey there, family. It's your girl, Angie B., your host of the hottest home hotspot. And this summer, Angie B. presents the concert you don't want to miss. Radio, women are being disrespected in the streets. I'm telling you, God made our women beautiful. Ah, mama head in the Bible, he pushed it to the side. Hop in the ride, headed to the west side. Mama on her knees every night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Make way for Godzilla. Death in the power of the tongue. Life and death in the power of the tongue. What you speak, you sow. Let's hide one. Hide one. I don't seek the Lord. It turns from my wicked way. This summer, Angie B presents Big City, Blacklight, Psy, Evidence 322, Keisha Dream, and Zion. The concert you don't want to miss, log on to thechosentour.com. Has life got you down? Do you feel like you're in a dark place? Suffering from loss of job, loss of loved ones, most of all, loss of self and loss of God. If so, allow me to introduce to you my book. Hi, my name is Don Martin, also known as Dazzle, and I am the writer of Fill My Cup. God has given me such a wonderful gift with this. It blessed me on my journey back from the dark side. I too suffered a major loss with the loss of my mother, and from that was a two-year depression. God gave us Fill My Cup so that we can heal, so that we can motivate and empower one another out of the dark place. The devil is a lie. Only God has control over our life destiny. And Fill My Cup will help you to reclaim, rejuvenate, and restore your life. Let God fill your cup. Allow Him to bring you back from the dark side. Trust me, I know it works. The Real Business Network and Design Group is a web development company who combines professional web designs, networking, and advertisement in one package. We have a great reputation for working one-on-one -on -one with clients, capturing their ideals by way of graphics, visual communication, content writing, and much more. For more information, log on to www.therealbiz.net or call us at 1-866-462-2811. Inspirational, uplifting, positive music, The Real Biz Media is a unique recording studio with over 25 years experience in the music industry. We offer professional studio recording along with original music for the artist, songwriter, affordable rates, installment plan, and much more. For more information, log on to www.therealbizmedia.net or call us at 1-866-462-2811. And when we talk about my grandmother, I remember having a conversation with her to where, you know, she's 83. So she would be hungry and not feel like cooking a meal or just didn't have anything just to grab to put in her mouth. So she she wasn't eating, which, you know, being a diabetic, that wasn't good for her. So the Nutrisystem plan for diabetics um, seemed to, to work. For her, she's she's lost almost 20 pounds, and seems like she's eating regularly. And uh, but you're right. If if we're talking about a lifestyle change, um, 
I, I don't see how them preparing the foods would, you know, be good for somebody younger like us. <laughs> we, right. we we got time to change our lifestyle, and, and we need to do that. So, um, and thank you for reminding me of that. I remember that Mom had the Weight Watcher scales and things around the house, but I had forgotten that she worked for Weight Watchers. So uh, that made me feel really good to to be reminded of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and and it's something because it probably doesn't stay in your and Tanya's mind because it right. didn't affect you like it affected right. me. You know, right. she definitely um, was very restrictive with my food. And in that restriction, I would sneak food. Yeah. Um, yeah I can remember many times being punished because I, I would um, find a can of, uh, fruit cocktail that's way in the back of the cabinet. I figured she had forgotten about it, and of course, that's the night she decided she wanted to use the recipe. And you know, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> While I sip the syrup, you know, as my treat. Wow. So, um, wow. you know, it's, uh, it's, I think that um, for any program, anytime you're talking about uh, trying to lose, weight, as long as you can control it and have things that you like, then it it will work. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just don't think deprivation is ever the key. Mm-mm. 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 Tell me what the final straw was for you to then decide, I need to go the gastric bypass route. Tell me what was going on with you then. Well, I had um, researched uh, the gastric bypass for many years, about 10 years really before I um, did the, actually did the surgery. But the final straw for me was I was diagnosed as being um, type 2 diabetic and uh, it was devastating for me. I literally was crying in my doctor's office. Um, He, you know, sent in the nurse to try and teach me how to check my own blood and I was so nasty to her, I, I had to ap- call back and apologize because I was like, you know, you don't have to do me. I don't want to learn. I, I'm not checking my blood. I'm not diabetic because that's it. Um, I wasn't checking. I, you know, they sent me home with the machine. They sent me home with the medicine. I wasn't checking my blood. I wasn't taking my medicine. And one morning in December um, of 2007, I woke up and I couldn't stand up. Um, my foot literally would not hold me up. It was very tender. It hurt so bad that I was in tears. I remember calling my boss and telling her that there was no way I could drive to work. Um, I called a friend of mine uh, named Robert. He um, came over and had to carry me into the car, take me to the doctor, and they had to uh, get a wheelchair and wheel me in. I couldn't walk on my foot. Um, my doctor diagnosed it as a peripheral neuropathy um, where my diabetes had spiked in the night and severed some of the, the nerves in my foot. Um, at the time, I was 37. I was 37, and um, he was talking about removing my foot. And uh, that was the final straw for me that... Um, I always said that I was a healthy fat girl, and I was. I, even mm-hmm. to this day, I have great blood pressure. I've never had problems with blood pressure. Um, but, you know, my sugar um, got to the point like he was talking about removing them. So that was the final stop for me. Has life got you down? Do you feel like you're in a dark place? Suffering from loss of job, loss of loved ones, most of all, loss of self and loss of God? If so... Allow me to introduce to you my book. Hi, my name is Don Martin, also known as Dazzle, and I am the writer of Fill My Cup. God has given me such a wonderful gift with this. It blessed me on my journey back from the dark side. I too suffered a major loss with the loss of my mother, and from that was a two-year depression. God gave us Fill My Cup so that we can heal, so that we can motivate and empower one another, out of the dark place. The devil is a lie. Only God has control over our life destiny. And Fill My Cup will help you to reclaim, rejuvenate, and restore your life. Let God fill your cup. Allow Him to bring you back from the dark.
dark side. Trust me, I know it works. Hi, my name is John, and I'm a small business owner. I'm also the pastor of a small congregation attempting to make a difference in this community. I needed the services of an accountant who could help me with both my personal and business taxes. I wanted to work with someone local, and I found that someone. I chose to work with David Cole, CPA, with Cole and Associates. David Cole informed me that in the state of Florida, you can operate under multiple fictitious names. David taught our congregation the difference between independent contractors and employees, and the difference of separating business and personal accounts. David is located within walking distance of Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida, and he has been in business over 10 years. David Cole is a good, reliable, CPA. Contact the offices of David Cole CPA by dialing 407-536-2033. Tell me what that, that journey was like once you go to your first information session and you're saying, rah, rah, sis, boom, ba, I'm going to have bypass. And, and here I are. I mean, <laughs> what, what, what was it like to finally say, this is the procedure for me? How do you reach that decision? Well, um, you know, it's, it's funny how weight creeps up on you. You, yeah. um, you know, one minute you're buying a size 16 dress and um, the next minute that 16 isn't fitting anymore and you think, oh, I'll go up to 18, it'll be a little more comfortable. And then the next time it's a 32 and you're wondering, you know, how did you start wearing this tent? You know, wear it all in the, back, in the back where you don't turn around and look at your profile and your back is huge, you know, and you're like, that's how you didn't realize because you're not looking at yourself. Um, I'll never forget my first consultation at a bariatric treatment center, which is now called Barrett Centers. I went with my twin. Um, I wanted someone else that could listen to what the doctors were telling me. Uh, there were a couple of procedures on the table, um, but this doctor uh, did not think that um, I would be successful with the band, which I agreed. Um, and the band is basically a surgical procedure where they go in and put in a band around your stomach, and periodically you have to go back and have them fill that band with saline to tighten it, um, it can be removed, um, it can be broken. Uh, I know several people who have had it and it has not worked for them. Um, they're, you know, still quite fat. Uh, the gastric bypass, um, for me, the consultation was scary. Um, I had never had a surgery except for my gallbladder removed in 2000. Um, I don't have children, so any type of abdominal surgery was uh, frightening to me. Um, also, uh, they were concerned with um, whether I would be able to come out of the anesthesia because I had so much weight around my neck. Um, mm. I was on a CPAP machine, and, uh, mm. you know, they were worried about that. So that first consultation, um, you know, he told me, you're going to have to lose 50 pounds. What? What? Well, well, hell, if I could do that, yeah. I, I would need yeah. surgery. So, yeah. You know, um, yeah. Yeah. It was a bit frustrating to me. Um, he did show me a lot of charts and graphs and things like that. Uh, my sister, who, you know, can be quite blunt and, um, you know, stick to the point, basically, was like, well, how much weight is she going to lose? Um, one thing about gastric bypass, people tend to ask you, well, what's your goal? What? How much are they saying that you yeah. need to lose? Gas bypass is not something where, you know, you, so where do you see yourself in two weeks? So how many pounds do you want to lose in two weeks? It's not that. It is a lifestyle change where you really do not have a choice. Your stomach can only hold what it can hold after, you know, two, more than 20 years of being fat. That's what I needed. I needed that stop sign to say, okay, you're full. That's it. Um, so... In that first consultation, um, I met a very nice nurse who had had the procedure. She showed me some before and after pictures, and um, right. she asked me what was one thing that I wanted to do 
um, that I felt like I couldn't do. And I said I wanted to run. And she challenged me uh, to have a race against my twin sister around the parking lot after I had the surgery. Oh. Well, you know, I haven't done that yet. We have not uh, had a race. Um, <laughs> but, you know, one day I would like to do that and see if uh, she can keep up with me. You know, it's something. We're the same size now. So, um, you know, it's... Uh, so anyway, though um, that first and prior to my first consultation, I had um, two friends who had had the uh, gastric bypass, and okay. one had gone through um, extensive nutrition classes, which I was uh, lucky enough to be able to go to her with, and um, I learned some things that were very important that took me on uh, as I went into my journey of the um, gastric bypass and the main thing is that protein is what burns your fat it gives you energy, it fills you up and it burns your fat, period, protein while I, I've been working on this documentary 315 Closing the gastric bypass story a, a part of my story is, the, is uh, the health complications that have crept up in my life whether because I'm 45 years old or because I'm carrying 350 pounds. And, you know, I talk about these health challenges. The You mentioned your CPAP machine with the sleep apnea. I, I deal with that. I deal with the type 2 diabetes, whether that was something that was hereditary or because of the weight gain. I, I am now insulin dependent. Um, the high blood pressure uh, is controlled through medication. The uh, PAD, the you know, what the old folks used to say, poor circulation in your legs, you know, the heaviness and the fullness in my legs and the constant cramping uh, is what I deal with. The acid reflux. Oh, my God. I used to watch the TV commercials of people trying to prop up their beds that had gastric bypass and drinking gallons of water. And to me, it sounded so ridiculous until I really started suffering with the, the the acid reflux. And it's like, okay, let me just sit in this chair and take a nap. And maybe when I wake up, I'll feel better so I can go lay down. Um, the the asthma that has become worse. The you know all of these things that 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 um, that I really had to deal with. And then I go to a support group. And they're talking about the fact that after surgery, you may lose some teeth or have problems with your gums. After surgery, you may lose your hair. And I'm thinking, those things can't be as bad as the health complications that I'm dealing with right now. Tell me about some of the health challenges that you've seen your peer group have uh, since, since their post-surgery, since they're out of surgery now. Um, well, um, I'll start with the most severe. Um, I had a, I have a very dear friend who, um, directly after surgery, and she had her surgery, uh, two weeks after me. Um, she, uh, was at home and many infections began to set in. Um, I remember that. Uh, I recall she told me she, um, by her own admission, smelled like she was a uh, hamburger cooking. Um, she had to go back and have um, some follow-up procedures that remove the infections. Uh, those okay. that definitely was scary. Um, I think the the biggest um, downfall to many uh, people who. I know who've not been successful with the surgery has been um, just the lack of doing what they uh, are supposed to do. 